Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this special evening. This is the launch of the Bible Search and Rescue Project. And it will be an uh, interesting website. It's been a project in the making for about two years. And it came out of the West Star investment in, th in a think tank. And Ellie Elliott was one of the members of the think tank, and then she became the coordinator of the think tank and uh, has been leading and is the coordinator for this particular project, which we're really excited about. We've all worked hard on it, but nobody's worked harder than Ellie, and nobody supported Ellie like Linda, and nobody's uh, joined in to help Ellie like Chad. So we're really happy to have Linda, Ellie, and Chad with us this evening. Now, many of you know about Westar, but my job is to introduce you to Westar if you don't know about it. So I'm going to just share my screen in a second. First of all, I have to get the screen up in front of me. There we go. And uh, just have a quick look at our homepage, which is the westarinstitute.org. Westar is about religious literacy, and that's why this particular project is so important to Westar, because it attempts to reach out to the public to expose the scholarship and the results of our scholarship in ways that are accessible and useful for the public. So that is our main role, scholarship in public for the public. But it is scholarship. It's good scholarship, so that's why people like Ellie and Chad are involved to lead the front, the scholarship front, but to make it accessible to the general public. The other thing that we do very often are events, and you can go to the events page and you'll see here's tonight's launch, but there are events coming up and we can highlight that one on April the 27th, that's a Wednesday evening, and that should be interesting, the reading of Paul uh, in the African American uh, setting reception, resistance, and transformation with Dr. Lisa Bowens. So events are very important to us. Tonight's a special event, as I said. And if you want to support us, there's two ways you can do it. One, of course, you can give to Westar at the top right-hand uh, part of the screen. And the other is to become a member. If you go to membership, you'll see the options of the memberships that we have. And finally, of course, if you have any questions, contact us on the top right, you'll see the contact form. We're more than happy to communicate with you and to answer any questions you may have. So that's Westar, Scholarship in Public for the Public. And tonight, especially, Bible Search and Rescue is all about scholarship for the public. So I'll turn it over to Ellie, who is the coordinator of this project and who has finally arrived at tonight to launch the project. Ellie? Yes, thank you, David, and thank you to all of you who are out there as participants in this webinar. I see some of you are putting in your locations in the chat, and that's always fun. And this is tonight, I think we're, we're kind of community building and doing something a little more lighthearted than usual. And just um, introduce, you can introduce yourselves, feel free to do that and um, say hello. And if you have uh, questions, just uh, go ahead and put them in, or thoughts, go ahead and put them in the chat. You'll probably have thoughts once we see the website itself. But I'd like to start out by introducing two, two people who, as David has said, have been really instrumental in helping make this happen. Linda Hodges is usually in the background for Zoom events. So we're thanking Celine Lilly for taking her place today in the background to uh, do all those little things that have to be done. And um, she's been a Westar associate for some years and has served on the Westar board, is now the communications director and assistant to the executive director, that is David Galston. And what you may not know is that she was the instigator of what has become the Bible Search and Rescue website. And she'll tell you about that in a moment. But first, I'd like also to introduce Chad Venters, who is a Westar scholar for, for several years. Um, his work on Matthew 25 will be published soon by Fortress Press. 
And he brings some great experience with constituencies that are more evangelical than most of Westar's current membership. And Chad is also a prison chaplain and an expert in other intriguing fields like the Ultimate Warrior World Wrestling Foundation, um, and also I think uh, a serial killer, the Zodiac Killer. Anyway, you can correct me. Chad has helped immensely as we've developed the website to be ready to launch. So let me call on you, Linda, to tell us about the origins of the project. Great, thank you, Ellie, and thanks everyone else here. Thank you for everyone for attending. I'm gonna read my little part here. Um, so my idea for what eventually became the Bible Search and Rescue website comes from my fundamentalist roots. It was to have our scholars write the West Star Fundamentals. And this idea was modeled on a series of tracts and pamphlets published from 1910 to 1915, known as the Fundamentals. They comprised or consisted of, 12, of a 12 volume set of 90 articles that became in their own way, the gospel truth of Orthodox Protestant belief and were based on a literal, literal interpretation of the Bible. First published in 1910, they were meant to counter the growing influence of the non-dogmatic study of the Bible or biblical higher criticism. Um, a little bit more on that. The fundamentals were behind the rise of fundamentalist Christianity and were used by Billy Graham, Pat Robertson, Jerry Falwell, and other televangelists to spread the literalist interpretation of the Bible. Their ideas are still widespread and live almost as gospel truth for fundamentalists today. Westar, as you probably know, came about in large measure to refute these fundamentals. In 1985, Bob Funk gathered what would become the Jesus Seminar at Berkeley, California's Pacific School of Religion, that's where I went to school, to conduct historical Jesus scholarship in public for the public, as David said. Um, in Bob's opening remarks, he wrote in part that in this process, we will be asking questions that borders the sacred, asking a question that borders the sacred, that even abuts blasphemy for many in our society. He also said that the book of Revelation keeps many common folk in bondage to ignorance and fear. And, you know, that's still true today. And not only that, fundamentalist literalist dogma is finding a strong foothold in our public life as American citizens. So back to my part in this, I pitched the idea of the West Star Fundamentals to board president Jeff Robbins, who also came from a fundamentalist background, and to David Galston, who did not. He, he's very lucky to have escaped that. So. Uh, they thought the idea was a good one and that it would find a home in the new think tank. So when Ellie Elliott came on board as a think tank coordinator, she and I began a series of meetings to discuss the idea as a project. Gradually, it became clear that the findings of the biblical criticism didn't fit well into clear-cut answers. As you all know, there's a lot of gray, so writing our own fundamentals probably wasn't the way to go. She and Chad will share the next part of the story, but I'll conclude by saying that the Christian, that Christian fundamentalism is growing in strength, if not in numbers today. They're white male supremacist, anti-immigrant, anti-LGBTQ, anti-Black, anti-feminist policies are in the ascendancy. And they're using Jesus and Christianity to declare their work as sacred, right, and true. It's my hope, my dearest, greatest hope that Bible Search and Rescue will serve as a counter to that thinking and that maybe people like me who reach a point of becoming doubting evangelicals can find West Star and come to the Bible Search and Rescue and begin the process of simply asking the question. Uh, maybe we can, with this, this new site, grow good trouble, grow some good doubt into the mm -hmm. human Thank you. Thanks, Linda. So, Chad, give us some words about your your experience. 
Well, I think I, I got to uh, be a part of this because I, I live in Reno. And so for several years in the, the Reno area, I've been part of a group called Roots for Christian Growth. And what we, we've been doing is we've been bringing a biblical scholarship into churches. And so myself and a colleague of mine, Peter Altman, who's an Old Testament scholar, we started operating where we were, we were going into churches and we were teaching on perspectives about revelation and, and actually doing full programs with people within the church world. And this had its roots in previous stuff I was doing here in Reno, where uh, you know, getting opportunities to get into, you know, the non-denominational evangelical type settings. And I remember it first started with actually teaching a class on comparisons of the synoptic gospels. And what was really fascinating about the experience was in teaching on the comparisons and showing people that the, the gospels are not a singularity, but unique and diverse products. It was not something that sent them, you know, running to the hills or pulling their hair out. They actually thought it was really fascinating. And, and so those kinds of things continue to grow. And so I, I've done a few special teachings here and there, like on the, the battle of David versus Goliath, just talking about everything from the setting of, of the, you know, what was happening, who the Philistines were to the differing heights of Goliath offered in textual evidence. And what was just continued to grow out of that was people were genuinely fascinated. And even when it was bringing up, we actually talked to one time, we talked about America's place in God's kingdom. And that was really interesting because we brought this perspective as to maybe it's not completely about us, right? Like perhaps God's kingdom in America is not this singularity of hand in hand workings that a lot of times is assumed in modern eschatological thinking. And that background, I think, contributed to whenever Ellie was doing this, and Ellie and I met actually at my very first West Star seminar, and and so we we hit it off. We became instant friends. So we, you know that was we were kids back then, and now um, here we are. And so I think that was my my biggest contribution to this. You know, Ellie was the the, the architect behind it all. I, I think most of what I contributed was trying to help bring that perspective of what it's like to be both a scholar and try to operate in the church world. And it's, uh, it's something that's very much needed uh, because it's mm -hmm. something that's very underrepresented. And remarkably so because many churches fear biblical scholarship. They are, they are deathly afraid of what is going to be said or to challenge the thinking of parishioners, which is so counterintuitive to the notion that if we have beliefs and that we believe that what it is is real and there's there's something to it, that you know we, we shouldn't worry about the fact that we could challenge thinking with scholarship. We should embrace those challenges because truth will remain intact. And so yeah, if we've been we've been at it for a while and it's been a lot of fun and uh, just happy to be here. Yeah, thanks, Chad, and thanks for all of your your work and help to frame this. We've, you know, every time we have met on Zoom, we end up coming up with some zany new idea to add to this website. So and <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And partly that's because you're in touch with a different, certainly a di much different constituency than, than I am. And many of us as uh, West Star people. So, the project evolved, as uh, Linda said, um, I was assigned this West Star Fundamentals project as a think tank analyst. And she and I met regularly and I realized we needed to broaden the discussion. So I decided we should form a focus group. And we also did a survey monkey that some of you out there may, rep may remember. Um, that was, that really, was really informative about Westar for all of us. But the focus group was really important for this and lots of people have helped along the way. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and take a big risk, but I would like to not acknowledge those of you who participated in those focus groups or contributed in other ways along the way. It is almost a given that someone will be missed from the list I'm about to read. So my apologies in advance, 
and I want you to let me know so that I can be corrected and acknowledge you. Um, so many people have contributed over the past two years. So in order of um, alphabetical order by last name, Austin Adkinson, Sarah Morris Brubaker, Gretchen Boehner, Tom Capo, Diane Divelbess, David Galston, Lynn Tuttle Gunny, Barbara Hampson, Linda Hodges, Carl, I don't want to ruin your last name, so it's J E C H, Bill Leto, Celine Lilly, Robin McGonigal, Donna Meinhart, Scott Merriam, Bob Miller, Ruth Parada, who has been patient with redoing the logo a, a few times, um, Shirley Paulson, Lynn Pickover, who took a good look at the website, Natalie Renee Perkins, who I'll mention again in a minute, Richard Putz, Deb Niederer Saxon, Gordon Raynal, Alan Richard, Catherine Rickert, Jeff Robbins, Mike Short, Evelyn Smith, Stephen Tickner, and Chad Venters. And I should also mention um, members of the think tank, Jordan Miller, Julian Julia Kahn and Terrence Dean, who pitched in some thoughts along the way. Um, so the focus group sessions were quite productive in clarifying the project. And we had some fun in the brainstorm sessions. And I ran across a, um, a little fun thing I want to share. Just uh, this, this is really odd. Does everyone see that? Uh, it's sketchy. It's kind of some sketchy notes from richer conversations from some breakout groups to brainstorm. And I'm showing this because there's a current I want to mention as we launch the site, something Chad has talked about and Linda too, that we're about something much deeper than debunking. Um, we're really not about, um, debunking literal understandings so much as the emphasis, the emphasis that emerged was about exploration and deepening understandings, not being academic Bible smarty pants. The sentence that was encircled is also worth attention that we're opening what is closed things that have been closed in a literal determined understanding are are something we want to open up for people. The focus group clarified other things as well, but the other element I'd like to mention um, in this gathering is the target constituencies. So we understand who this website is intended for. It'll serve the constituencies, both of existing Westar members and of people we want to recruit to membership and people who simply need this information. Um, people from, first of all, people from biblical literalist backgrounds who are questioning that form of interpretation and its consequences. So we really aren't, this is not targeted towards hardcore committed biblical literalist fundamentalists. It's for people who are thinking their way out of it and we, there, those people are definitely out there. Secondly, to religious leaders, especially religious education leaders who are already part of Westar or already educated in Bible criticism and who need resources to inform their own groups. Thirdly, people from a variety of backgrounds who need to address Bible abuse in public discourse. So we'll hope to provide some resources for that, that need. And fourth, for people who identify their religious affiliation as none, who have, for whatever reason, become interested in the Bible as a foundational text for Western culture or for other reasons. And I think along the way that we will find there are other constituencies out there who need this, and we'll find out who they are. So the focus group met several times over the summer in 2020 and settled finally on the name Bible Search and Rescue after we couldn't use Exploratorium because it would raise legal issues. 
And then we also settled on the tagline, there's more to the story. Then we got underway to produce the website. Now, some of you out there may know that the first effort at setting up the website was worthy and serviceable, but we are greatly indebted to Natalie Renee Perkins for a reality check in the kindest way. Um, Natalie brought us from a 20 year old graphic look to something much more current. Those of you who saw screenshots of the early version may be surprised at the current look. It's been developing since that graphic overhaul too. With that, we're almost ready to unveil the website. But one thing first, I'm going to uh, click on a poll. So in fear and trembling, not having done this before, I am launching a poll that's called Swag Options. We've been talking about having some swag for West Star and for this project in particular. And in the process, I've become a, um, aware of this whole world of print on demand swag. So I want, want to ask you, invite you to vote for things that you might be interested in having as swag with the, the Bible Search and Rescue logo on it. Um, you can go ahead and start voting anytime you want to. Um, and this will give us some idea. And with print on demand, we have the option to pick some other things if, if that's what comes up. But this gives us some idea of things you might want. And then the second question is what you think we should invite us some sponsors for to to hand out as favors the next time we meet in person. We will meet in person again someday. <laughs> someday in Jerusalem or Santa Rosa or we don't know <laughs> where. But just, you know, give us your thoughts about that. So with that, I don't know if we can look at the website while also voting, but we're going to try it. So I will share my screen to, um, to take a look at the website. I have to go back and thanks everybody for all the messages in the chat. This is fun. Um, not that I've seen them, but I'm glad they're coming. So with the drum roll, here it is. Did somebody give us a drum roll. Can you see the website? No, not yet. Not yet. Still drum rolling. <laughs> there it is. OK. All right. Here it is. So this is the home page. We settled on biblical literacy for this site rather than religious literacy, which is the mission of Westar, because this has a focus and we decided let's go ahead and focus on the Bible. Um, so I'll just scroll down so you can see what's here. There's an explanation of the site with an explanation of the two main pages where we have posts. One is the search, and we'll see that in a minute. It's the basic information. And the other is the rescue, which is answers to the question, does the Bible really say that? And our thought was that this is a Snopes kind of site. Where, so we have, we have a um, rescue meter that's based on the beads that the Jesus seminar started out with. So I don't know why we've on there. Then we added a podcasts page for some podcasts because that Chad convinced me that we needed that. And it's really been fun. A submit page. And so it 
shows the what's recently been searched. These are the first three posts that are available. And then recently rescued, the three rescue posts. There'll be a page to submit questions and get added to the mailing list. And then this describes the site. There's more to the story. You may have heard the Bible says so as an end to the conversation. Bible search and rescue is an invitation to a deeper exploration. And some of you will be nostalgic for the flamingo. And I've added a, a sponsors page. Um, so if your organization, church organization, whoever is interested in sponsoring the website, contact me and um, we'll figure it out. So I also want to just note that Chad's project with his colleague in Reno is here because of all the volunteer work he has contributed. And eventually that may get underway again after the pandemic, right, Chad? Hope we'll so. just we'll see and then contribute to the work we do. So that's the home page. The search page. Did anybody have thoughts about the home page? Interrupt me, please, if you want to. Um, so the search, note that we've got the magnifying glass from the logo. Love that. I get and it. And then the search has three posts so far, and we'll be adding more. I plan to add posts twice a month, uh, one on each of these pages, and we'll figure out the timing for adding podcasts. That's occasional. So the Just Read the Bible post um, talks about what Linda was talking about with the fundamentals and how fundamentalism and ways of reading the Bible so that people assume what's in it um, actually has roots in a, an intentional program of addressing um, biblical criticism. So it gives that history. And there's a little doodly video that I won't play all the way through, but you can just see the picture here. Um, so you can do that at your leisure. I don't want to hear my own voice. It's <laughs> <laughs> you sound great. So there you. Didn't you say that this figure is kind of the hairstyle you had when you were a kid? Yeah, it does look <laughs> like me. So cute. <laughs> so you can go look at that when you want to, any of you. And it is basically. The text here in the post is the same. And each of the posts has, where it says print version, it has a PDF version that's formatted so that you can print it out. Most of them will print out on two sides of one piece of paper. One is three pages long, but, um, or four. Um, anyway, most of them are under a thousand words and that can be a resource for any, you know, you'll see if you, if you need it for a resource for your local groups or just, um, it's a way to print it out and read it without the website. Because the platform we have doesn't print very easily. So that's why we do that. So the next one is Jesus, Son of God. And it talks about how the how Jesus was identified as son of God in the context in which the Roman emperor was also identified that way. And it only scratches the surface. So we invited Bob Miller to do a podcast with us. We want to do some um, podcasts where scholars discuss and amplify and actually maybe even disagree about some of these topics and show that it's not all unanimous, but this one we were pretty much in agreement. So that also has a print version and we'll see, see that on the podcast page. 
And of course, there's a link to Bob's book for those of you who know that that's a great, great resource for all of us. And the third one is called Paul Wrote Letters. And the point of this, and I think the point of um, some of the initial offerings is what Chad was describing of just the scholarship is intrinsically interesting. And um, also this getting this point out there that Paul wrote letters, not scripture and just getting people into the notion of historical context that way. This is assuming people read it, of course. <laughs> That's part of it. Um, then the third, so then there's the rescue page with, you guessed it, the lifesaver that's also in the logo. So it answers, does the Bible really say that? And it offers answers to uses and misuses of the Bible. And the rescue meter there is based on the beads with the black, gray, pink, and red. And do you think everyone will be interested in seeing each of these pages? I'll just show the pages here. How are we doing for time? We're fine. Okay. Um, so this is a lovely meme that was circulated by one of our fine Montana legislators. She's uh, she has some definite agendas, but it certainly visually expresses what is done with the Bible. And then it answers some of the assumptions that are contained in that, that meme and takes a position essentially for this website. So some of these initial offerings are explaining what we're about and then is the Bible a weapon? Well, we didn't say no, because yes, it's used as a weapon, but not really. So we have offer some other options. Then the second one is, is there such a thing as the Bible, which raises a simple question or just raises the simple fact that even though a Texas legislator wanted to introduce a bill, fortunately it went nowhere, but uh, a bill to make the Bible the official site state book of Texas. Um, so we asked the question, is there such a thing as the Bible? And talk about the different Bibles, Protestant Bibles with certain number of books and Catholic Bibles and also different translations and that there really isn't a single Bible. Just, just raising questions, as Chad said, to, to get people thinking. And thirdly, we have one more, one more post available to start with, and that is, is hell biblical? And I found it interesting that a group of Facebook friends from college days were actually having a conversation about this. And I will be sharing this link with them now that when the website's launched. Um, so it is, this, this is a really important question because it's one of those things that people fear the most. And this, post basically says, yes, there are images of hell in the Bible, but hell itself as a place of eternal torture is something that emerges later. So this is kind of to help take some of that fear out of it. Um, so those are the rescue posts. I'm surprised that I'm still doing a monologue, but <laughs> You're great. You're great. <laughs> podcasts. So we have three categories of podcasts that we want to continue to do more. Can everyone hear me? I'm getting a low system resources message. Um, you sound good. Okay, um, great. 
then so we we started out wanting to do podcasts that give different scholars perspectives and we'll continue to do that and then we came up with the idea of biblical characters when we were thinking of interviewing Joanna Dewey um, for some other reasons and realized she has always done the JSORs with um, a woman from um, the early Christ groups. So we thought we could have meet biblical characters and we'll do some posts about biblical characters and then do in-person interviews with uh, those of you out there who are interested in doing this, I'm sure we have some dramatic people out there who right. might be good to to do some research on a, a Bible character, or maybe we can have a meeting of the minds or a meeting of the Marys would be a good one. Um, anyway, so those are in-person interviews based on historical research, and then we have some want to do some conversations that are like our version of testimonials interviews with people about how their minds have changed and you know what difference it makes for faith and and how to teach your children things like that based on learning more um, about biblical criticism and and learning more about all of this religious studies so we have the jesus son of god podcast the Meet Pontius Pilate con podcast with our own Chad Ventures playing Pontius <laughs> Pilate. Um, and then I hope you will take a listen to this interview with Lynn Tuttle Gunny. Um, and we're looking forward. We hope that, Lynn, you will um, reissue your Meet Jesus book for all of the young people out there. Um, we actually, this conversation helped us even more in framing what we're about. So that's the content of the website. There's a submit page where you can uh, ask questions and ask to be put on the mailing list. Very exciting. Hi, Ellie. Um, yes. Dana Lobau has her hand has a hand raised, and I don't know if they would like to ans ask a question or not. And so, oh, that hand went down, but up oh, Lynn's hand was up a second. I just wanted to see if we had other people who wanted to ask uh, questions, but they've taken their hands down for the moment. <laughs> um, are there questions in the chat that we should know about? There aren't questions in the chat, and I did catch okay. the questions in the q and a already um and okay. yes everybody just keeps saying how awesome it is um henry has a hand raised and so i'll um, tell you what what we're going to do is um we're going to finish seeing the website then see what how we're doing with the polls and um launch the site with the drum roll. Did I miss something? Um, we were gonna bring everyone in. And then, then we plan to try bringing everyone into the panel. We hope that there's enough space to accommodate everyone because um, just everyone can come in and then we can ask the questions and, and comment on the, on the website and just have a free for all general discussion. Um, so hold those questions and we'll have fun with them. Okay. Is that good? I hope. Good. So, and we can decide, I see at that point, we will need to turn the recording off though. Um, right. For so. just a moment more, for those of you who haven't been to the Flamingo at Santa Rosa, this is the setup. You're seeing so. the scholars talking. There's Celine right there. Um, a lot of various folks sitting around the table discussing all of the, um, the uh -huh. Christianity seminar, God seminar, and then this, and then also the associate members. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun. There's Sarah, Steve Patterson. There's David. Yeah. Robin. Lori Walkie. Lori. Yeah. Um, so. This about us is more about West Star and Linda and I are talking about redoing it, but there's 
there's the beads and that's the website. It's gorgeous. So, so it looks like on the swag, I can see the results here. Um, lots of people want the mug with the, I can do all things through a verse taken out of context. <laughs> um, baseball cap, okay. Refrigerator magnets, portfolio, a high quality water bottle. So that gives us a great idea. Oh, no votes, hardly any votes for the Zippo lighter. I want a Zippo <laughs> lighter. I wanted the Zippo. <laughs> Yeah, the, the phones, right? The phones learned it all. You know, you don't have to light anything up at a concert. Okay. Get out your phone. Oh, good. Maybe we should order stickers too. We can uh, order stickers and send them out for with things. So, yeah. Um, has every if everyone has had a chance? I think I will now end the poll. Looks it looks like there's been time. Ninety. Yeah, lots of people yeah. have participated. And um, and then since it's since we can do print on demand, we can add other options and just uh, we can um, have fun. Philip has uh, posted a a link to a drum roll. In the oh, <laughs> bring it up! Bring it up! <laughs> okay, so I think are we ready? Uh oh, I need to go. I need to go back to the website. So let me share the screen again. Okay. And in great fear and trembling, I have to say that this has been our own little private world for I know, so for long, long time. that to have this available to the public is um, a little intimidating. <sighs> Button at the there bottom. There was a button. There it is. There it is. Okay. Should we count down five? You ready, Ellie? I've got the button. Okay. We trust five, it will work. Four, three, two, one. Ta da! Ta da! Did it work? It's about to. It's now public. Wow, so we'll have to try and see. All right, I you. will share on chat. I'm going, I'm, I have the, uh, the main, the main um, website address domain in the chat and I'm going to send it to all of you. And you can see if it, some of you can, maybe we should appoint a couple people to try it. Lynn Gunny, will you try it? Make sure it works. You might Philip have, says it's still yeah. private. Yeah, I think you have to click public and then you're gonna have to click save on the, once you, after you click public, so then you Thank go. Thank you. Oh, good. It takes a committee. Oh, well, my, our site is now live. Does everybody see that? Okay. Ellie, this is so wonderful. Okay, share it with the world and start driving oh, traffic. There it is. So, Got it. All right. <laughs> Thanks for everybody's help. This is wonderful. So I'm going to stop share at this point because now you yes. can all see it on your own. And so we, we start, can bringing, people start in? bringing people in and then. Okay, Celine, I'll start at the bottom. So David, should we turn off the, um, the recording? Sure. This will be a great discussion. It would be wonderful to have a recording, but maybe we should start again. We can so ask. we can keep it separate. Um, okay. Because we don't want to have a public. Um, we don't have permissions from a hundred people to have it have your recording so so we won't necessarily put out put this out for everybody um as a public thing but um 
I need a record of, thank you. I hope that's, that's uh, kosher. If that's an okay word be, to use. I think it would be very helpful to have um, the original definitions, including from the original Greek and Hebrew and so on, of pretty fundamental Christian words, things like salvation. You know, what 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 does that really mean? That because sometimes it's gotten twisted around. Uh, through different lenses in modern times, it'd be good to go back and see what Jesus' words actually were, as best we could. Or what it meant or, in context. Yeah. Salvation is an excellent suggestion, yeah. But that's great. I want to ask what an important hey, question. Ellie, Carl. Hey, Carl. Hey, oh, so I was going to say, Adrian has a hand raised a second. Oh, okay. But just one little one little detail. Carl, how do I pronounce your last name? You need to unmute just to tell us. Cock, C-O-C-K-E. As in Cock County, Tennessee. Oh, okay. And Carl, J-E-C-H. Uh, it's like the tech, T-E-C-H. You uh -huh. see E-E-C-H, you know it's tech. Same here, Jack. Jack, with yeah. a J, okay. okay. Who knows in the old country in, uh, <laughs> in uh, Czechoslovakia. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so, Adrian. Hello, yes. I was wondering if you regard it as part of your remit to encourage people to look at and study some of the non-canonical gospels. I think we will be, we will be uh, mentioning those and also linking to a wonderful resource um, that some of our uh, West Star scholars, uh, particularly Shirley Paulson and then Hal Tausig has been really helpful with it. The Early Christian Texts website, which is, has developed a lot of ample resources on that. So we, we will answer questions and then we've got this wonderful other site to link to um, with wonderful resources. And I think it's okay to collaborate and cooperate and plug another great, great resource. So it's called Early Christian Texts, Bible and Beyond. Um, hey, Gretchen. Yeah, um, I have attended uh, fundamentalist church services, and there will be a dramatic reading by someone on tape, of course, of a particular passage or story, and then uh, the official uh, interpretation discussed in front of the congregation. I was wondering if it would be a good idea for uh, this wonderful new vehicle to have some of these um, recordings of reading with a more open-minded interpretation or asking questions about why it's been interpreted in a particular way. Oh, that's a great idea for another uh, another kind of podcast. Um, yeah, that sounds great. Or other re recordings. I think uh, um, we could think about doing doodlies too with the uh, Bible, with Bible readings, um, with questions. Um, and I'd be willing to help on that. Hey. Oh, looks good. Even better. <laughs> <laughs> so you're getting into i mean we're getting into some of the thought that um you know not just doing things in the modes that west our people are familiar with and you know our our kind of modes of learning and thinking but also the kind of content that um the kind of media modes that people who are in biblical literal 
environments are accustomed to, like, you know, thinking about testimonials, um, just the experiential elements. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, that's, so uh, all these experiences are, are helpful. Dorothy. Tomorrow, probably with a lot more chutzpah than expertise, I'm starting a class um, based on three books after Jesus before Christianity, a new New Testament and Mary Magdalene revealed. And I've asked the participants to read a chapter in one of those books and we'll go from there because um, we can't cover this in six weeks, but I want them to kind of have a way to get in. And the second thing is, as an official ambassador, I've been asked to provide uh, the devotion for a group of Presbyterian women. Guess what we're going to be talking about? So, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Joan? Um, Joan, yeah. One of, one of the things that I've found helpful when Dom Croson is speaking is he will, uh, in his, some of his videos, he will say, um, most biblical scholars agree with this. This is up for grabs. Maybe 70% uh, do that. And I think that's very helpful both to create your ambiguity and, um, and also to guide people to, into what's going on. That's, that's great. Um, that reminds yeah. me of one of the ministers, mm -hmm. a longtime member, Reverend Jerry Stinson, who always said, think for yourself, your minister may be wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, this is Anna Price speaking. Yeah. Uh, a question. Right. I may have missed it, but are, are, is the site going to address just the canonical gospels or is it going to include John and is there going to be any mention of metaphorical interpretation? Oh, these are um, two really important things. We need to, starting with the second, we need to include in our topics more than the usual topics from the Jesus seminar early era and kind of the basics of historical criticism, but also um, I know in the in the little in the uh, just read the Bible post, it does mention that there are many other expansive um, ways to look at the Bible that have grown from the enlightenment era we're not stuck in modernism so yes metaphorical interpretations um and certainly a whole array of other um other methods of coming at the bible for instance we probably should look at like next week's event can give us some hints for reading paul um, from other perspectives and other methods. So yeah, we need to talk about that. And I think we will do information about definitely about um, extra canonical texts. And as I said, we have the resource, to, I mean, we can do these basic posts and then have resources. There are wonderful resources out there to link to, especially the early Christian text site, but also some of, I know that there are some scholars um, connected to our whole circle that have done things like recordings of extra canonical texts that are wonderful that we can link to. So yes, to both. And if you have suggestions for metaphorical readings, um, resources, just you know, feel free to send them to me. That would be wonderful. I'm just very excited about the whole idea. Thank you so much. And congratulations. Well, yeah, well, congratulations to all of us. Thank you. And I think to add yeah. on to that, Anna, um, because we are inevitably going to be dealing with apocalyptic literature. We have to, because there's nothing more central than that, right? In right. some of the overall mindset. 
Um, when we get into apocalyptic <laughs> literature, we're absolutely going to be dealing with Enoch and Fourth Ezra and Two Baruch and, and these these texts because they're all absolutely pivotal for understanding what apocalyptic literature looks like in the first century, especially after the the temple falls. Right? There's they're they're essential, and so yeah, there it, it's absolutely something we're going to be hitting on because we have to in order to try to help put some of these texts into an actual historical setting as opposed to just a a constant rehashing of some kind of apocalyptic sword that is used in every generation you know or for every you know every era of the church to say you know aha here it is you know this is this is what's happening russia russia right now right russia oh here it is you know there it is pat robertson once again calling it you know 15th time he's you know he's he's called it but this is the one right Right. Yeah. So, Robert, you need to unmute. There. I was pressing hey. the wrong part. <laughs> well, you were just kind of going there when you got to talk about metaphorical apocalyptic literature, but um, I'm a pastor of a small church. Uh, that uh, has a lot of older folks in it, and their their big interest is uh, uh, kind of hand in hand with the kingdom of God and eternal life. You know, how do you? Uh, I've mm -hmm. talked to this, talked to them about it till I'm kind of blue in the face. But I, I would uh, uh, hope hope for some uh, uh, insight on that, how we might get that across. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. So what are some of your lines of th thought about that? It's, I would say from my experience as a pastor years ago, that there's some things that historical critical method, you know, I, as a pastor, I just wouldn't mess with. <laughs> because um, it's not helpful at the bedside of people who are dying. You know, it's just, there's some, <laughs> we don't give them historical criticism in certain oh, situations. Certainly. And I think you might be ref referring to some of that, that we you know as we, um, it's, those are things to think about. I mean, it, I, I don't know that we're gonna get into all the pastoral issues of, of this but it's certainly these these are really important questions i mean well, I the pastoral speaking, implications of yeah, maybe i've got you wrong yeah i wasn't speaking so much of the pastoral type but when they're in that shape i, I just encourage them whatever makes them comfortable pretty much mm -hmm. but as a teacher you know uh, and talking about it when people are still trying to ask questions and figure these things out <clears throat> for me i i always just sort of go to the kingdom of God is happens wherever justice is being done or, or love is being expressed. Grace is being fed into the world right there is the kingdom mm -hmm. of God. Uh, I don't know, but they, they still think want to think in terms of the afterlife. And I'm trying to get them to think in, in terms of right now. Mm-hmm. That's Christianity really did uh, take a turn when it went to the heaven and hell constructs. So um, I, I'm not real helpful on this. Other people, there's, we've got a hive mind here that can, <laughs> that can <laughs> respond. I was going to say, so I was thinking I'm, that about, you know, maybe yeah. something down the road you could think about as well. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, when I, when I was working on the question of is hell biblical, it was like, oh my goodness, we have a gigantic topic here. Um, the afterlife. Um, Robert, I'll yeah. put this in the chat, but um, 
Warren Carter's book, John and Empire, has a wonderful chapter called, um, it's something like Eternal Life, Eternal Rome, and actually talks about how Rome talks about um, its eternity and going on forever and how this language was appropriated um, by the early Christians, mm -hmm. particularly in the Gospel of John. And I'll put that in, but just an interesting, you know, these, these interesting resources that, you know, other people know about here too, that just kind of abound. And um, um, again, Ellie, like what a great, I, it's just, it's so exciting to see kind of all of these things um, come together, both Chad and Ellie on this site. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Robert. Helen has her hand up. Yeah. Hi, um, just a quick thought. You, you had mentioned, Ellie, about having a section called uh, Implications of uh, the Pastoral or I would even say implications of one's on one's faith. You know, is there a section on the website where you might have uh, a space for reflection about how these biblical understandings, this broadening of the context and the history of it, what it does to one's faith? Because I think that yeah. that's a key issue uh, that you're going to get from mm -hmm. your audience that needs to be addressed in a very diverse way that would actually give people some tools and, and vocabulary and, and bridges to this material and with mm -hmm. you know, feeling that they're being uh, unfaithful or untruthful to their own faith, uh, the pastoral implications, the faith implications. Yeah. So you're adding something that we could be interviewing some of our praxis professionals as exactly. well as, uh, um, I would point you first to the podcast with Lynn Tuttle Gunny, who is whose image is right below mine on my screen, <laughs> right? um, who talked, and that discussion, it, um, that was su such an enjoyable discussion. So, yes, it was um, amazing. Um, Can you put the we website hope... link in the, uh, in the in the chat or the so? That is on the podcast page currently, and it's podcast oh. three. Okay. But what you point to is something we probably need to do to um, organize things more than just the podcast. I've got some issues with square, Squarespace and how we organize that. But um, so that it's visible that some things are... Um, Here's, here's what applies to your faith questions as well as your Bible questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, cross-referencing. So, um, but mm. our init the initial discussion that Chad and Lynn and I had was helpful in framing what we're about. Um, you might say something, Lynn, about your, um, your experience with your children. I think this is one of those things that, um, and somebody brought out that we need to have resources for talking to children. And I mean, that's, it's, you know, it's that Could we need to work with this. Yeah. For you to add. Yeah. And my, my, my kids are older now, they're 19 and 17, but um, when they were younger, um, it was really important to me to uh, help them to uh, kind of have a more accurate view of, of the historical Jesus. And, and as I talk about in the podcast, I talk about writing a book about the historical Jesus called Meet Jesus. Um, and just talked a little bit about the kinds of things that I did to uh, bring them into the material in, a, um, in an accessible way. Uh, but it's certainly something that there are many more uh, I think it's such a need that's out there and it's not being that well filled right now, but I, I, I can suggest some um, some resources for that. And yeah, it was really fun to talk with you, Ellie and Chad. And I, I, I would love yeah. to hear other people's mm -hmm. uh, journeys too, um, coming from various faith, faith traditions and, and how that has changed uh, when they um, uh, come in contact with biblical historical criticism and, and how that has impacted their, their faith. Yeah, when I, if I can pick you up on that, I think that there's something important that, that connects all this, which is that sometimes it, it seems that biblical scholarship and, and say pastoral concerns are somehow sort of on opposites of one another. I, I think that they're extremely interlinked, more so than people understand, 
uh, particularly because uh, there is a there is a great amount of hunger out there that people have for wanting for wanting that knowledge for wanting to understand and, and i found this not only in the church but as a working in a prison so i'm you know 40 hours a week i'm i'm the the chaplain of a medium level correctional institution here in in uh, nevada and so we we have inmates um you know death row inmates uh you know guys doing life one third of our inmates are sex offenders and, you know, in, in doing this, what I have found is that the questions that inmates have about things like scripture and history are the exact same questions that people outside of prison in the church have. Yeah, it, it's, it's the same thing. People want to know and that there is a desire for that. I think the key to it, and I think, Helen, you used the word bridge, which is important because a lot of times what has happened is scholarship has been used as a tool to sort of slay and dismantle, right? Like, and Ellie touched on that. We're not here to debunk, right? What we're here is we're here to bring expertise in a, in a conventional way that people can access to say, look, you know, here it is. It's not an attack. Let's look at the text. Let's draw it out. And when we can, when we can look for bridges as opposed to you know, barrier walls, that makes a huge difference on how people will receive stuff we present to them. I would think too that Westar might have uh, unjustifiably uh, taken on that reputation <clears throat> in mind and that this kind of website can help to correct that in the approach that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl's got yeah. this. Yeah, I just... Uh... I think we we need to overcome it, it's not us so much as people who use this historical critical material kind of in ignorance in in it sort of glom onto something and become there's i think we all know some atheist smarty pants don't we people who <laughs> that kind of we're so, we're so smart that we can't we don't yeah, whatever. We don't want to do that. So, <laughs> Carl. Yes. Uh, could I ask if the uh, the books by Jeffrey France on the God you didn't think you could believe in, but it's okay, and the the Bible, uh, the Bible you didn't know you could believe in, are they scholarship like that? helpful in what you all are trying to accomplish. And I would also mention that mm. Fred Ehrman's, uh, or Bart Ehrman's a book on misquoting Jesus. Uh, is that kind of scholarship helpful to you all? In so is maybe somebody in the hive mind here is familiar with Jeffrey Franz. I am not. Bart Ehrman is certainly a fine, fine New Testament scholar who um, has, he, he's a fine New Testament scholar and um, what differs, how Westar differs is that we're a group and we, um, we have a collaborative culture and he's contributed a, a great deal to the field. I, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, um, so is, is anybody out there Familiar with Jeffrey Franz? I am not. So I will look him up. Um, the uh, God you didn't know you could believe in? And the Bible you didn't know you could believe in. Okay, I'll, I'll check recent. those. Um, there is so much material out there. It's really hard to keep up with all of it. So <laughs> that's why we have more than one person involved. And I think that especially... Because, you know, when you're trying to meet people on all ends of the spectrum, right? So you have some people in the ultra conservative background. There's certain scholars who, you know, oh, they're just some kind of liberal wacko fruit from the poisonous tree sort of approach, right? <laughs> and, and you get the same thing on the other side, though. You get people who, if, if it's written by someone who expresses any form of faith, right, they don't want to touch it because it's just tainted. Someone like Ehrman's valuable because he's an agnostic but he's a scholar. And so, you know, usually along the spectrum, you can typically find someone who can sort of serve as like that. Okay. I'm willing, I'm willing to give this person an audience with my time 
because they're not just going to give me the, the typical lines that, you know, person X, Y, or Z would. I actually just gave an ermine book to one of my lieutenants who's an atheist, but he is fascinated with religion. He's fascinated with what I do. We've become good friends. So I was like, well, here's Ehrman's book on did Jesus exist? Check it out. It, there's some, there's some value to it. Philip, I see you put the link in. Thank you. Maybe you have an opinion, but after Gretchen, Gretchen had her hand up. Um, Let me just unmute here. Am I unmuted? Okay. Yes. Um, I come at, came into this as a historian, and it's been my experience that it's an er it's a period I'm have done a lot of study on. And I will talk to people about what was going on historically at the time and then present this is the context in which such and such a text, whether it's um, one of the four gospels or Paul. And that seems to be less threatening to people when they hear it, oh, okay, so this person was writing, this was what was going on in their environment. Yep. That's part of the point, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Could we be out of questions? Is that a possibility? <laughs> <laughs> if we're trying to tell someone yeah. who's not very computer literate how to get onto this Bible search and rescue site, what's the quickest and easiest way to tell them how to do it? Talk to so, you. <laughs> the um the address, the, the main domain is biblesr.org. And I put that in the chat a while back, but I will put it in the chat again. Um, and um, I, we will, we don't know yet, it's just launched, we don't know yet how the search engines will respond. It does take a while for the search engines to pick it up, they kind of troll through and it uh, does take, you know, 24 hours or so for them to see new things and start to incorporate it in their search results. Yeah, and I'll be checking tomorrow and then doing some, like, uh, there's some things to check with Google and make them redo it and stuff. So, um, so if we yeah. typed in um, Bible search and rescue, we wouldn't be able to get to the site. Um, we have... There's quite a number of domain names that we that will direct to the site. I actually typed in BibleSearchAndRescue.com and it took me to the site. Okay, yeah. that's one of the dom we bought several domains so that we would good job yeah. not get uh, mixed up <laughs> with. This. Yeah. So BibleSearchRescue.com, BibleSearchRescue.org. The primary one is BibleSR.org or com, um, yeah, Bible search and rescue with and written out. Um, so yeah, that, that will get to it. And then it should, we'll just have to see what the search engines do with it. So I noticed Colin is with us, Colin. And we had some thoughts about the, I mean, we'll have to just, maybe we'll have to talk Colin about Praxis connecting, you know, how to, connect Praxis with some of the questions that have come up here um, and sure, connect yeah. the site. Maybe have some, I don't know if you have some initial thoughts, you're welcome to share them or not. <laughs> but I didn't I'm, mean I'm to really put you on the spot. Really, no, that's okay. I, I'm, that's okay. I love you. I, I'm, I'm really excited just for the website, just to be able to sling it around, to be honest, with, uh, with just the average, average person, you know, when someone brings up something and be like, actually, I have a website, you can check that real quick. Like, I just think that's such a great tool. It's almost like Google, but for mm -hmm. pubs, right? Like, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I can share something, Ellie. Sure. Our website, the, the Westar proper, the most visited sites we have 
are, are the, the most visited pages are the ones that talk about LGBTQ issues. I mean, it's really overwhelming how, how people come to those sites looking for information. And we don't really know what their reasons are. But I will share that if you've got family members or you know people that you know that are questioning in different ways, these sites are going to be really helpful for folks. So for example, the, on the AJBC book, talking about gender bending and all of these things came as a real surprise to a friend of mine whose church basically threw her out um, because, because she's gay. So to think that some of the early Jesus communities are experimenting with these things and looking at these things in a not negative way was very liberating. So I'm really hoping that as we progress with this, that we're going to have uh, people coming here who are, who are feeling trapped within a fundamentalist mentality to, to, to talk about another way forward and to just empower people to, to feel good in their own skin. So thank you. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Um, other thoughts? Thanks to you for all your hard work, Ellie. Well, thanks everybody. I, um, I want to, yeah, let's give a round of applause. Several, quite a number of you were in the focus group and I really am so thankful, you know, Gordon. And um, if I start naming everybody on the, I think <laughs> I'll right. stop right there, but hello. <laughs> Um, Ellie, you worked just really so great. hard on this. Everybody, everybody yeah. helped that you you um, spearheaded this and made it such an amazing mm -hmm. site. And Chad and I are thrilled to work with you, and um, and Lynn, you mm -hmm. too. So just a wonderful thing. I just hope yeah. you share. Everyone shares it with um, everyone you know, with your pastors, with your church members, with family members. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, it'll ease and people looking at these things. And just uh, continue to s feel free to send suggestions of topics, thoughts about swag, <laughs> anything <laughs> else. Uh, um, you know, the thoughts that you've shared here, I missed get noting a couple right at the beginning of this discussion. So whoever spoke up first, just email me with a reminder of what you said, because everything shared here is like, oh yeah, we could do this. Yes, we should keep this in mind. Um, it won't all happen at once, but um, if we build, you know, a couple, couple posts a month, it'll start to build, um, build a backlog of things to, to respond to. And then if people are asking questions, we have a way to engage people. So I'm really I'm excited and also yeah. a little intimidated that it's now out there <laughs> <laughs> and it's real, but it's probably time to say, what is it? Good night, Gracie. <laughs> That's <laughs> well, from a generation we before me. <laughs> yeah. So thank you everybody for participating. Thanks for every, all the help in the background from Celine. Thanks, David. Do you want to close us out, David? You know, I always get that uh, privilege. I appreciate it very much. And I never know exactly what to say. <laughs> I end up repeating thank you to everybody. But I do appreciate everyone participating tonight uh, for this launch and also for the questions that are tonight and are to come. It's going to be very interesting. So appreciate it greatly. And good night, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. See you on Bible Search and Rescue. Yeah. Thanks so and much. Next, and night. next week. And next week, yes. And next week, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Linda, do we have the chat? Wait. It would be Celine. Do we have the chat recorded? <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have saved the chat. Okay. Um, so I will, um, I'll email that to you, um, to, okay. to you and, um, and to Linda. Okay. 